Good morning. I'm Dan Tuckle. I'm the chair of Butzel Long's Labor, Employment, Benefits, and Immigration Department. And on behalf of all the attorneys at Butzel Long and the staff, I'd like to welcome you to what is now our 21st annual Labor and Employment Law Seminar. Uh, a couple of housekeeping matters before we get started. I'm sure more people will be trickling in as the, uh, as the morning goes along. One of the cases that was decided recently addresses the, the issue of so-called Me Too evidence. Uh, the case is Sprint versus United Management. Employers are often faced with this issue. They get a claim of discrimination that uh, Title VII applies only to employers with at least 15 employees. It was designed to eliminate coverage to the smallest employers. Section 1981, like Michigan's Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act, applies to any employer that has at least one employee. That recognition, the court said, that's where the burden lays. We can expect that, in fact, it will be more difficult and more expensive for employers to prove this, and they need to make sure that they've got the evidence to do it because the burden is going to be placed squarely on their shoulders. You had to be regarded as having a condition which met the rest of the definition. That is, you had to be regarded as having a condition which substantially limited a major life activity. Congress, in passing this amendment, said, no, that's not right. Now, all you have to have is any perceived impairment, whether or not it substantially limits a major life activity, as long as it's not minor or transitory. Again, what is minor and what is transitory, we don't know. Uh, a broken arm, probably transitory. A cold, probably minor. But in between, there's a vast range of conditions that we don't know yet if they're going to be considered minor or transitory. But clearly, more claims will meet this definition of regarded as. Another change that Congress added in these uh, amendments is that several major life activities are now specifically defined. There were regulations before that defined some major life activities that have to be substantially limited. Those are things like seeing, hearing, walking, breathing. But the statute itself didn't define what a major life activity was. Now, there are some specific definitions of things that are considered major life activities. They include working. There was a lot of debate over whether, under the old standard, working was a major life activity. The statute now clearly says, yes, it is. Another specifically defined major life activity now, the ability to concentrate. My personal favorite that now is specifically considered to be a major life activity, eating. Uh, if you're substantially limited in your ability to eat, uh, an affliction that uh, doesn't seem to affect a lot of people these days, but it's certainly some, that's a, that's a major life activity. Congress has also said that the operation of any major body function is a major life activity. If any particular organs or systems of the body do not work in the same way as they do in another individual, that is considered a major life activity. We can certainly expect that there are going to be a lot of cases in the upcoming years defining these new standards. And do please remember to fill out your evaluation forms. Um, I'm going to now turn over the stage to our first general session. Uh, it's one of the highlights of each year's presentation, the, our, our own butts along players who are going to talk about how to properly conduct a workplace investigation. I hope that you have an interesting, exciting, and informative day. Thank you all for coming. Welcome, welcome to HR Today. And we're, we have a very special show today. We've got panels flying in from all across the county. And we wanted to make sure everybody got here to get started. I want to tell you that we have a great show today. As many of you know, HR Today is the unique show. The unique show that brings the workplace into the home. Unheard of in the 21st century, right? Advertisement. Now, before I introduce the panel, let's go with HR Today's top 10 list. The top 10 reasons 
that you know your investigation is going bad. <laughs> Number 10, you find out that your videotape has been taped over with reruns of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Number 9, excuse me, it's okay. Number 9, your son sends your interview notes to gawkers.com. Number eight, jumping ahead. <laughs> IT says that your viewing www.babes.com cannot be included as part of your investigation. I know that disappoints some. Number seven, thanks to www.babes.com, you become the target of the investigation. <laughs> Number six, you begin laughing because you know the punchline of the dirty joke the victim's retelling. <laughs> Not a good one to do, I'm told. Right, panel? That's right. <laughs> okay. Number five, confidentiality, I've heard is important, but number five, the guy in the mailroom reads your investigation and pulls you aside to tell you, OJ did it. <laughs> number four, the CEO comes into your office and says, what happens in Windsor stays in Windsor. <laughs> that looks like it's gonna be a tough one for you. The number three reason you know your investigation is going bad is, the investigation has been going on so long, how long, how long? How long? that your company's now owned by Bank of America. <laughs> the second reason, most important reason you know that your investigation is going bad is that your boss tells you you have to review 625,000 text messages. <laughs> and finally, the number one reason that you know your investigation is going bad, you're taken off the case and replaced by Matt Millen. Good job, Jimmy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're too kind, you're too kind. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our select panel. First to my right is John Hancock from Butts Along's Detroit office. He says he's seen it all of a multitude of issues, such as the ones we're going to be discussing today. What we're going to be doing with HR today is asking this prestigious panel to comment on a training video produced on workplace investigation techniques and strategies. We're going to watch and analyze it together. And yes, those of you here in our studio audience who know, who watch the show every day, realize we ask for audience participation. So get ready. Without further delay, we're going to get to the first scenario. It's called the high-low incident. And our initial serial brings to life the old saying that appearances can be deceiving. Let's take a look. Get him in here now. Get him in here. Are we rolling yet? Yeah, yeah, we're okay, rolling. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. You can go now. You sure? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, oh, my name is Bart Biffle, and I'm a supervisor, new supervisor, good, in Warehouse 6. And I'm here on Saturday, June 23rd, 2008. We've had an accident at 8 o'clock. It's 8.46 now, and I'm about to interview Bob Smith, okay? Bob Smith was involved in an accident in aisle six, section 410, running into an aisle with his high low, okay? Are you ready? Can you state your name and in your job for the record here? Right there, right there. Uh, my name is Robert Smith. My, my friends call me Bob. <laughs> and I, um, I'm the high, high low operator for row 437. Smith, you was involved in the Section 410 accident morning at 8 o'clock? 
Forte. <laughs> you, you ran into the boxes and the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, yeah, yeah, can, yeah can you yeah. explain yourself? <laughs> well, I, um, I, uh, I was in the break room, and uh, I, uh, I was coming back. I got in my cab, and uh, I, I put him forward, and, and then I went in reverse, and all of a sudden, all these boxes started to fall, and, and then I blacked out. Oh. Smith, you smell a booze. Were you drinking in the break room? Oh, no, 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 sir. I, I can't drink. I have a condition. Oh, can I have a seat? Oh, sure. What were you doing in the break room, Smith? Well, uh, Jim and I were talking about last night. Oh, it was so beautiful. And then... And then I said, oh, I don't know. Get him out of here. You're drunk. Get him out of here. You're, you're fired. You're done. Get him out. Get him out. You're fired. Wow. It looks like uh, the supervisor audience has made a decision. Um, now, I'm going to ask for your participation here. Anybody in the audience? We've got uh, an HR Today microphone going around there. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, if we could, anybody want to comment? Very good. What else could you, may you have done? I would like to know what the condition is. And did he self-identify? We didn't ask him what his condition was. Excellent, excellent. Anybody else? Well, I'd want to know uh, what medications he might be taking and if he's good, if, I'd probably test him to see if he was drinking or not before making that assumption. Yeah, a little bit of suspicion of that. No question about that one. Um, we got one more? Uh, I would always a couple more. OK, great. I think they could try to suspend before they terminate and do an investigation. Angle. Wow. I, you know what? What's amazing is that through the magic of our training videos, we actually can show everybody that there was another hidden camera, and this one was in the break room. Let's roll with that. Hey, Bob. Hey, Jim. Pour you a cup of coffee? Yeah, that'd be great. I just gotta sit, though. Oh, you okay? You're kind of out of it. Oh, I'm fine. I had a late night last night. You know, yeah. my my mom's engagement party. Yeah, yeah, how'd that go? Oh, it went great, but I was running late this morning, so I threw on my same clothes and hustled over here. I wasn't about to break my streak of 23 years without missing a day on the job. But my, my cousin spilled his beer on my shirt last night, and oh, the smell is killing me. I can smell it from over here, man. Oh, I gotta tell you, though, I mean, you, look, you look way out of it, but what's going on? Oh, I was so excited last night, I took a sleeping pill, and I, I think it's having an adverse reaction with my blood pressure medication. Oh, jeez. It was such a beautiful evening, though. Toss it to you guys first. Uh, after viewing the video from facts, the more you need to step back and make sure you're not being uh, blinded by uh, the subtleties of the situation. And two, several people mentioned drug testing. This points out an a interesting situation here. It's been there 23 years. This new supervisor didn't know. This new supervisor didn't know that he's been there 23 years. The new supervisor didn't know that this person had a condition. Maybe everyone else in the operation knew, knew about it. The other guy in the break room, apparently, uh, could relate to it and wasn't too surprised about uh, about the condition. So there, there was enough information there that the supervisor heard that should have alerted him that he should have gone gone to it. Now we wouldn't have seen, you know, we wouldn't have have had audio in the break room. I mean, I hope no one's doing that. But but uh, <laughs> and that that could be another Without episode. Notice. Yes, Without notice next year. Correct. Next year. Yes, yes, let's talk about that. But, uh, but you have to uh, be careful about, um, you have to follow up. And, and I think that's, that's where everyone is, is really latching on. You have to follow up. You don't, make, don't jump to conclusions. You got to corroborate uh, your suspicions. Even though you're sure that this guy is drunk, well, you know, let's, let's do the drug test. Let's not have him just get fired. Let's not let him drive home on his own either. Uh, that, that would 
would uh, create other that problems. That sounds like that's pretty important to remember, Rob, about the drug. In this kind of case, uh, it would be. But follow, follow your procedures. And, uh, and then ultimately, I, I think what we have is that you have a rookie supervisor. About whether to terminate the employee in particular, this is where a trusted manager claims that a subordinate had threatened him. So let's roll the tape. So tell me, Brutus, just what did Fred say to you? Well, I was out there trying to get him to job, trying to get him to move the crates. And all of a sudden, he turns at me, walks toward me, and looks at me. He says, leave me alone, Brutus, or I'm going to take care of you. Did you take that as a threat? Well, he was angry, and he was pointing his finger right at me. Did you do anything to provoke him? Nothing. I was just trying to get him to do his job. Were there any other employees who heard the threat? Bill Dawson was out there. Well, what do you think we should do? Well, he threatened his supervisor. We ought to fire him. Fire him, based on that. Would we, audience? Uh, is this enough? You've Our professional may feel like, well, we've got the word of the manager and we have enough to go on. But it's important to take the other information you've got and complete your investigation. And that's what gives the employees confidence in the investigatory process. And you may even find out things about the manager that you didn't know. Excellent. Well, let's see what kind of investigation that they actually did. Why don't we take a look at the next vignette? Bill, did you hear what was said between Brutus and Fred? Yeah, I saw Brutus yelling at Fred to pick up the pace. He does that all the time, though. Well, what did Fred say? Well, when Brutus was started to talk about Fred's mother and her romantic liaison with the 82nd Airborne, I think Fred got a little upset. So, uh, you know, he, he went up to Brutus and he said, he said, if you keep that up, I'm going to take care of you. And then he kept on walking out the door. I kind of think uh, Brutus was kind of disappointed, actually. Why would he be disappointed? Well, you know, last week the same thing happened with Harvey Wolbanger and Brutus. And uh, uh, the next day, uh, Harvey Wolbanger, you know, he came back to work with a busted lip and, and black eye. And, uh, you know, I, I think... Uh, I just think that Brutus thinks that the supervisor ought to be the strongest guy in the shop. He's not going to take any crap from no one. Fred, did you threaten Brutus? I told him to stop talking about my mother or I would take care of him. What did you mean by that? Well, that I'd report his harassment to HR. What else would I do? You think I'm crazy enough to fight that guy? Panel, at, at uh, this point, uh, HR has spoken with the victim and now, and, uh, and a witness. The loose ends still yet to tie up. Well, let's see what happens if they do that. Roll it. Brutus, were you frightened by Fred's remarks? No. I was hoping he was going to do something. Yeah! So I could kick his ass. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Brutus, uh, John, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I know I'm a lot better than looking that uh, Wow. I'm glad. Let's see, that was a, what we're going to see is going to be the perceptions of each individual as to what happened at, on this day through their own eyes. Let's take a look. Hi, Jane. Hi. That dress is fantastic. What? You really look hot. <laughs> hey, have you been working out? You, you really look good. Let me go. Hey, I was just trying to be nice, babe. No need to get pissy about it. Hi, Jane. Hi. I really like that dress. My daughter Sarah has the same one. I've always thought it looked really flattering on her. Oh, thanks, Frank. You're so sweet. You're welcome. Boy, it really has been hot lately, but at least you'll be keeping cool in that outfit. See you later. See ya. Okay. Uh, go, with the, go with the boy. Audi What's go, that? go with the boy. <laughs> go with the boy. Audience. Uh, 
Okay, okay, well let's, uh, let's see if your prediction's correct. Uh, why don't we roll the next tape? That is exactly what I was looking for. Yes. Oh, come to Papa. All right. Hey, oh, Jane, Jane, come on in. Sorry, I'm, I was just looking at the circular here. I'm going to get this uh, mixer for my wife for her birthday. I'm pretty excited about it. Have a seat. What brings you here today? I want to make a sexual harassment complaint. I've been thinking wow. about this for a few days, and I just can't let it go. Frank Smith sexually harassed me. Really? Frank? That's, that doesn't sound like him. Uh, tell, me, tell me what happened. Well, I was in the hall. I was taking some papers to the copy center, I think. He stopped me and he told me I looked really hot. Then he grabbed me. He said, you look great in that dress. Man, you look hot. Have you lost some weight? Did, did he say anything else to you? He may have. I don't recall. I was just so shocked. You mentioned that he touched you? Yeah. After he said I looked hot, I started walking away and he grabbed my arm and he pulled me towards it and he tried to kiss me. What, uh, what, what day did this happen? A couple days ago. Tuesday, I think. What time? Uh, morning, I think. Um, okay, we're uh, obviously going to do an investigation here. As part of that, I need you to um, write down for me what happened. So if you could write out a statement here, I'll give you some paper and a pen. Just take your time, write down everything that happened, all right? Okay. Hi, Frank. Come on in. Uh, have a seat. Uh, thanks for coming in to see me. Uh, I have something I need to discuss with you. What's going on? Well, um, one of our female employees has lodged a complaint against you. Sexual harassment. Who? It's not Mary. <laughs> I can explain that. No, no, no. Uh, Jane Curtin. Oh, that cute young clerk in accounting. I've never done anything to her. Well, she says you did. Uh, do you remember talking to her a couple days ago uh, in the hallway by the copy center? I did compliment her on her dress she was wearing. She looked nice. It was Wednesday morning, about 10.30. Well, what, what did you say to her? I said, Jane, I like that dress. My daughter has the same one. Did you say anything else? Not that I remember. I mean, uh, I was just passing her in the hall. I didn't think it was something I'd have to memorize. I do remember it was Wednesday uh, morning because Tuesday night my wife and I went out to dinner with my daughter and my daughter had on that dress. It was black with a floral pattern around the middle. Uh, Jane was wearing the same dress the next day. Did you, did you touch her? Of course not. She says you did. That's insane. I would never do anything like that. The only reason I said anything to her in the first place was my daughter had the same dress. That's just sick. Okay, we're, uh, we're doing an investigation. Uh, as part of that, I'd like you to write out a statement. Just write down uh, everything that happened. Okay. Well, audience, what else would you like to know? Uh, would have if this goes to the EEOC. How would the EEOC analyze it in this particular kind of situation and in many other uh, situations of, of uh, involving investigations and employee uh, conduct? It's, uh, well, what, what's the... Are they trying to get back at somebody? Are they trying to do, make up for a wrong that they believe in some other situation? A lack of a motive uh, makes, helps you make the decision. If there's no reason for this person to lie, then maybe they're telling the truth. Hard to believe, but maybe that's so. Maybe that's so. Uh, I don't know about you. We should ask the audience if it sums up with them. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> well, why don't we take a look at uh, the actual event that occurred uh, that morning? Why don't we roll it? Hi, Jane. Hey. I like that dress. It's very flattering. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, it's been hot lately. Keep cool. See you later. See ya.
had to do something when I was there that morning, I guess. They had to find a spot. Okay. At this, you're going to discipline somebody or decide not to discipline somebody in a harassment or discrimination case. You should set forth in writing um, what you did and how you arrived at your conclusions. And have a summary of the procedures you used, um, you know, the facts you gathered, witnesses you interviewed, documents you, uh, you reviewed. And they look me in the eye and tell me the story. Uh, how are, the, are there, is their artery pulsating? Is their neck bulging? Is, are they sweating? These are all indications. Because you realize you've brought them in, you've uh, accused them of something, or you've asked them about something, and it, it's the old story. You don't have to worry about the facts as long as you're telling the truth, okay?